All right, so so far we've heard from mechanical engineering, we've heard from design and how the information from engineering informs the design. It's one thing to be able to create a design, it's another thing altogether to be able to manufacture it and manufacture it on time. I'm here with Tom McLaren. Tom's a project manager here, here at Dynamic Structures. Tom, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Good. Good hey, morning. you wouldn't mind if uh, you show us a couple things as to what you're doing, huh? Oh, no, absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. Okay. So, so tell, tell me a little bit about what uh, what information you receive and how you use it to make sure that you guys get jobs out on time. Okay. Well, the, the first thing we've got to really look at is uh, the manufacturability of the of the model. Uh, you know, what the designers when they get into doing the model, what they end up at the very end of the day is something that's very precise, very accurate, and uh, it's finished. So close enough doesn't count. In close this enough doesn't count because we only get one chance. Everything we do is fairly unique. It's complex. Uh, we get one 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 crack at it. Uh, so we've got to be very careful how we actually approach that. So from the from the the inventor model, uh, what we've always got to be wary of is is how it's broken down into the details. Uh, any weldment is made up of a number of details. Uh, they can be five details, ten details, a hundred details. So one of the things that can quite often happen is when they explode it, a lot of the accuracy of the finished model gets transferred into the finished detail. Mm -hmm. And we've actually got to look at that now and say, now do we want to have uh, highly tolerant holes and machined edges at that stage? Or do we, because what would happen then is that our fabricators would then be spending all their time and energy trying to uh, put together a, a high accurate watch when really what we want them doing is uh, putting together a fabrication that uh, will, will meet the, the final application of what it has to do. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we look at the drawing and we look at the, you know, there's a, a two-way process here. We don't wait till the, the model's absolutely finished uh, to find out that we can't get access to certain parts to be able to machine it. There's an sure. interaction between the designers and the manufacturing to make sure that we have all the information. Well, it's an, it's an interesting concept, right? Because you take you take component design, mm -hmm. and then you you have to translate that into manufacturability, manufacturing process, mm -hmm. and turn engineering documentation then into almost like a step by step. This is how it needs to come together during manufacturing. That's correct. And that's what the designer has to really be keeping that in, constantly in mind as well. That he understands the steps of the process. I mean, he's really got to be able to look at his final design and, and walk through that as to how he would make it as well. He's mm -hmm. got to really understand all the processes that are out there. I mean, from a machining point of view, we know, we know what uh, all the, the latest machines can do and what they're, the, 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 what they're very capable of doing very accurate work. So what I'm hearing again is, is it's the one thing to be able to, cre to create and document the finished model, mm -hmm. you know, in the digital prototype inside of Inventor, but it's another thing altogether to be able to account for manufacturing, assembly, and weldment process into your documentation to make sure it's clear to your fabricators. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's, that's uh, as I say, because we've only got one crack at uh, doing a lot of these weldments, we have to go through that process in good detail and make sure that everyone understands it. So as I say, there is, there's always a continuous interaction back and forth with the designers, and generally, generally that's during the process of the design and making the model that uh, we're asking all the right questions at all the right times, and we don't find out at the very end that we're, we've got a difficulty here. We've now mm. got a, a 20 ton uh, weldment that we're going to have to ship somewhere to put one hole in it because it's, uh, we don't want to be in situations like that. Well, you know, what's interesting is, is that, you know, you say 20 ton weldment mm -hmm. as though it's something that, that everybody else deals with on a daily basis yeah. and it's just, it's just commonplace. So it's amazing to me that, you know, the same organization is creating bridge structures, telescopes, mm -hmm. uh, entertainment rides, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and, and what I've found so far mm -hmm. in, in interacting with all you guys is it's not so much the end product. Mm -hmm. it's, the, uh, it's, it's the process, attention to detail, and the creativity that you guys put into your designs, which makes you truly unique. And, and how that translates then into uh, what you have to do with the design to mm -hmm. get it out to your fabricators to turn you know, imagination into reality is quite impressive. That's what makes working here uh, absolutely an exceptional place to work because the turnkey systems that we, we provide, and we're never sure what's coming through the door next. And uh, will it be another ride? Or will it be another telescope? Will it be a? Uh, we're never quite sure. So that's what makes every day uh, quite special. That's great, Tom. Thanks so much for your time. You're more than welcome. I appreciate it. Okay. You know, I had a great day here in Vancouver working with Dynamic Structures, and I've known for a little while. You know, I've known Craig and team for a little bit, but it was nice to actually get up here and work with them and get to get to know them a little bit and 
and figure out what makes dynamic structures tick. And the things that I learned from this was it's not just that they create telescopes, it's the fact that they create the world's biggest telescopes. It's not just that they create bridges, they create some of the most unique structures in the world. And from an entertainment standpoint, you know, heck, I wish I could tell you some of the things that they, that they do because you've probably ridden those rides before or stood in a line on opening day that was three miles long just so you can get a, get a, get a taste of it. So if you can imagine it, Dynamic Structures can build it. And it's not just a slogan for them, you know, they really take a unique approach to solving otherwise unsolvable engineering problems. Using, utilizing simulation tools up front to inform the design that ultimately goes into their digital prototypes so that their physical prototypes don't end up in the tank. <laughs> we'll see you next time.